Good morning, First Baptist Carlsbad. Uh, it is good to see you on this Easter Sunday morning. We are so glad uh, that you are joining us for this very special online worship as we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Uh, whether you're watching at 1045 on Easter Sunday morning, whether you're watching at a different time, and uh, maybe on our YouTube page, uh, maybe uh, through our website, thank you so much uh, for tuning in. And uh, you could be doing anything else at this very moment, but I do believe that God has drawn you to participate in this online worship with purpose, with reason that you might be changed and different because you have heard a word from God and worship him this morning. Thank you so much for being a part of this very special Easter worship service. I do want to share with you just a couple of brief announcements as we transition into worship this morning. Uh, if you need groceries, medicine, and you're not comfortable in getting out, particularly our senior adults, please call us, stay here at the church office, call any of the pastoral staff, as well as uh, uh, Doug Burr, chairman of our deacons. We would love to be able to uh, minister to you in that way and bring you groceries, medicine, uh, supplies that you might need. Uh, also, uh, if uh, you would like more information about upcoming schedules, what's going on here at First Baptist, particularly throughout the month of April, you can visit our website at uh, fbccarlsbad.org. That's also the best, very best place, safest place that you can go to give online your tithes and offerings and uh, click on online giving and that will walk you through the process. Uh, also, uh, beginning this morning, uh, we're going to be on the radio, uh, uh, the late broadcast uh, each and every week at 9 o'clock from 9 to 9.30 on KATK Radio, 92.1 FM here in the Carlsbad area. Uh, so for those folks that may not have internet access, may not be able to get online, uh, they can hear that broadcast each and every week at 9 o'clock on Sunday mornings. And we're so glad uh, to be able to offer that uh, beginning today. Uh, but as uh, we uh, enter into worship this morning, He is risen. He is risen indeed. Pastor Gary, you come. Lead us in an opening word of prayer. Father, we thank you for the love that you demonstrated to, to each of us and to the world as you sent Jesus to die on the cross for our sins. And we know, Lord, that love was demonstrated when when Jesus came and was resurrected, he came from the grave, defeating Satan forever. And we have the honor every week, every day to celebrate that love, but also every Sunday when we get together to worship you, we celebrate his resurrection. And we just thank you for the love that, that allowed you to do that. And we just ask you to continue your guidance in this time of a trial that we're going through and that you might lead us through and you might be honored in everything that, that uh, you allow to happen. And just to ask again that you guide us to this time of worship as we celebrate today. In your name we pray. Amen.
Wait, hang on, hang on. All the way back here. Long ago, this is what they felt like when it happened. And today, it's how we should feel too. Because what it meant for them, it means for us. One day we'll see
Pastor Kevin, the praise team, uh, for sharing that powerful message, glorious day. The living, he loved us. Uh, buried, he saved us. Uh, rising, he justified us freely forever. One day, again, he's coming again in power. And boy, this, that's the message of Easter about the Messiah. Jesus Messiah was saying just a few moments ago uh, that he came to this earth, born that he might ultimately go to the cross of Calvary there on Good Friday, die, not for his sins, for he is the sinless, spotless Lamb of God, but for our sins, for your sins, and for my sins, and the sins of the world, dead and buried, but three days later, rose again, victorious. He is risen, he is risen indeed. That is the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's the good news that we proclaim, not just on Easter Sunday morning, but each and every day of our lives. You know, there's a lot of bad news that comes into our life these days. Now, if you have a smartphone, if you have a smartwatch, it seems like it's going off all the time with notifications uh, of breaking news. Uh, just this past Monday, uh, got an Amber Alert, and usually the Amber Alert uh, signifies a, a missing child. That's, Amber Alert is never a good sound to hear on your smartphone or on your smartwatch. This past Monday was actually a notification updating uh, the state guidelines here in New Mexico, extending those uh, guidelines for the coronavirus out to April 30th. And so, again, just bad news, it seems, on every front. And even when you get some good news, maybe it's in your family, maybe it's in uh, your life, maybe it's good news that we hear going on in the fight uh, against the invisible enemy. And just when we think we get some good news, it we get bad news yet again. But folks, I, I want to tell you this morning that the best news that we could ever hear, uh, the greatest news that we could ever hear, the most impactful news that we could ever hear is why we are worshiping this morning and why you're watching right now. It is simply this, that Jesus Christ died, but he rose again. He is alive. He is risen. He is risen indeed. That is the message that we proclaim today. That is the message that we need to hear yet again today on this Easter Sunday, April 12, 2020, that He is risen. He is risen indeed. If you have a copy of God's Word, wherever you are, if you're able to stand, I would invite you to turn to John uh, chapter 20, the Gospel of John, as we hear uh, the recorded uh, words uh, of John, uh, the beloved disciple, in John chapter 20, as he records uh, Jesus' resurrection, uh, beginning in verse 1 of John chapter 20. And on the first day of the week, that is Sunday morning, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early, while it was still dark. She saw that the tomb had been removed. She saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she went running to Simon Peter and to the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, that's John, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they put him. At that, Peter and the other disciple went out, heading to the tomb. The two were running together. But the other disciple outran Peter and got to the tomb first. Stooping down, he saw the linen cloths lying there, but he did not go in. Then following him, Simon Peter also came, and he entered the tomb and saw the linen cloths lying there. The wrapping that had been on his head, that is Jesus' head, was not lying with the linen cloths, but was folded up in a separate place by itself. The other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, then also went in, saw, and believed. But they did not yet understand the scripture that, must, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to the place where they were staying. But Mary stood outside the tomb, crying. And as she was crying, she stooped to look into the tomb. She saw two angels in white sitting where Jesus' body had been laying, one at the head, the other at the feet. And they said to her, Woman, why are you crying? And she answered, Because they've taken away my Lord, she told them, and I don't know where they put him. And having said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know it was Jesus. Woman, Jesus said to her, now, why are you crying? Who is it that you're seeking? Supposing he was the gardener, she replied, Sir, if you carried him away, tell me where you put him, and I will take him away. And Jesus said to her, Mary. Turning around, she said to him in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. And don't cling to me, Jesus told her, 
since I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and tell them that I have ascended to my Father, and your Father, to my God, and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them what he had said to her. Father, we thank you this morning. Now for that uh, very first uh, announcement uh, of Mary to the disciples that she had seen the risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, Father, we thank you so much uh, for the cross of Calvary on Good Friday. And uh, Father, we thank you for uh, Easter Sunday and the resurrection which makes all of this possible. For without the resurrection, our faith is in vain. But Father, we thank you this morning that Jesus Christ did indeed rise from the dead. He did exactly what he said that he would do. And Father, because he is risen, uh, we can worship you, we can serve you, we can testify about you, and we can share the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ, that he is risen, he is risen indeed. Father, we pray this morning, that you would speak to us through your word and that we might uh, be not only your ambassadors, but we might be your spokespeople as we announce uh, to all around uh, that Jesus Christ is indeed alive. Father, speak now. And might we hear, might we put into practice all that you're calling us to do. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Uh, folks, Jesus died and rose again. He is alive. He is risen. He is risen. Indeed. Uh, folks, that, that, that's so important today, uh, particularly as we hear bad news all around us. Why? Because that is the most important announcement that any of us could ever hear. Indeed, that's the most important announcement, that's the most important news that any of us could ever share with anyone. And indeed, if you're a follower of Jesus Christ this morning, if you know Jesus Christ as Savior Lord, if He has risen in your life, it's because somebody somewhere told you and share the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Maybe it was when you were a child, uh, maybe your parents or your grandparents, maybe it was a church, at Sunday school or vacation Bible school, but somebody shared the good news that Jesus Christ is alive. The reality this morning, that Jesus is alive, that means three things for us this morning. First of all, that Jesus is true. Jesus is true. He is who he says he is, and he's done what he said he would do. Jesus is not just true, but he is truth. He is the one and only truth. In John chapter 1, uh, verse 14, John uh, writes this, And the Word, speaking of Jesus Christ, became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. Because Jesus is alive, we know today that Jesus is true. And Jesus is the only truth. Indeed, uh, Jesus would tell Thomas in John chapter 14, uh, verse 6, uh, when Thomas would say, well, we, we don't know where you're going. We don't know the way where you're going. Jesus says, I, I'm going to heaven. And if I go to heaven, I, I'm going to come again. I promise you that I will come again. I will receive you unto myself, that where I am, you might be also. And Thomas, who was always one to ask questions, Thomas, who was always one to doubt, we'll see that a little bit later uh, in the message this morning, said, where are you going? We, we don't know the way. And Jesus says, I am the way. The truth and the life. No one comes to the Father. No one gets to heaven. No one has eternal life in heaven but through faith in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is true. He is the truth. And we know that because Jesus is alive. He is risen. He is risen indeed. In a world, whether it's fake news, in a world where there is news that you that cannot trust, in a world where everybody seems to have their own version of of truth. We can know this for certain. Because Jesus lives, He and He alone is truth. The only truth that we have comes in through Jesus Christ and Christ alone. Now, so when you're wondering uh, what is truth, and when you're looking at today at all of the things going on in our culture, all the things going on in our nation and in our world, maybe things going on in your own family, maybe you're at your place of work if you're still able to go to work in the month of April to understand this, that despite all the noise, despite all the folks that say, I've got a version of the truth or I've got a version of the truth, know this, because Jesus is alive, Jesus is true. He is true. The truth and you can depend upon him as truth no matter what. He will never lie to you. He will never steer you wrong. He 
he is truth. In an otherwise untruthful world, we can look to Jesus Christ as our truth. And because Jesus is alive, Jesus is not only true, but Jesus is true to his word. He's true to his word. And Jesus, in fact, announced that he would rise from the dead. Uh, not once, not twice, but at least on three occasions to his disciples, uh, Jesus says, I, I'm going to have to go to Jerusalem. I'm going to be betrayed. I'm going to be crucified. I'm going to be dead and buried. But three days later, I will rise from the dead. And his disciples did not understand that. In fact, it would take until after the resurrection. And even as Jesus would continue to be with the disciples after the resurrection, it took a while for the disciples to finally understand, wait a, wait a minute, this, this really is true, and that Jesus is true to his word. Indeed, in Mark chapter 9, verses 30 to 32, and Jesus has said that uh, they went on from there and passing through Galilee, and he, Jesus, did not want anyone to know, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is going to be delivered into the hands of men, and they will kill him. And when he is killed, after three days, he will rise. But they did not understand the saying and were afraid to ask him. In John chapter 2, verse 19, uh, Jesus, uh, speaking to the religious leaders of the day, answered them, saying, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. And the Jews then said, It has taken 46 years to build this temple, and you will raise it up in three days. But Jesus was speaking about the temple of his body. When therefore he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. See, it took until after the resurrection for the disciples to, to really realize what was going on, to believe that. But folks, I want you to know today that Jesus is not only true, but Jesus' word is true as well. What he has said, you can believe. Uh, what he has said in his word, uh, you can take to the back. And you and I can trust Jesus and his word. Indeed, uh, God's word is our final authority. It's not just some authority. It's our final authority for our faith and putting our faith in practice, not just on Easter Sunday morning, but each and every day. And so we can trust God, and we can trust Jesus and His Word. And so no matter what we're facing today, and as individuals, as families, as a church, as a community, as a nation, and as a world, we can put our faith and we can put our trust in Jesus Christ and we can put our faith and trust in His Word. It will never let us down. And, and no matter what we face, no matter the issue that we face, always trust Jesus will always trust his word. It is trustworthy to the very end of life. Folks, we not only trust in Jesus because Jesus is true. We not only trust in his word because his word is true. But because Jesus is alive, we can trust in his promises. For Jesus is true to his promises. And particularly this, Jesus is true to the promise of the resurrection. You see, Jesus Christ is the firstborn uh, from the living and, and the dead. He, he rose again uh, that he might defeat, as Pastor Gary mentioned a moment ago, that he might defeat ultimately sin, Satan, and even death itself. And that Jesus rose from the dead and gives us hope and gives us promise, and gives us a, a new day to look forward to, even in the midst of all the bad news that we are experiencing, even this morning, to understand and to know that Jesus Christ is the resurrection and He is the life. And not just any resurrection life, but He is your resurrection and He is your life today. And He is true to His promises. Indeed, we see Jesus in John chapter 11 raise a very good friend of His who had been dead not just one day, not just two days, not even just three days, but had been dead for four days. A man by the name of Lazarus. Martha and Mary, his sisters, Jesus was good friends with uh, these three siblings. But Lazarus was dead and he was in the grave and it would take uh, Jesus four days to reach Lazarus. But when he reached Lazarus, understandably, Martha and Mary, uh, Lazarus' sisters were upset and were grieving. And Martha would meet Jesus as he was coming 
and into the town and coming to where Lazarus was buried. And Martha said to Jesus in John chapter 11, beginning in verse 21, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give to you. And notice Jesus' response to Martha. Your brother will rise again. And Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me and shall never die. And then he asked Martha this question. Do you believe this? Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of God, who is coming into the world. See, Martha believed before the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Uh, she believed even before the resurrection uh, of her brother Lazarus, but when Lazarus came back to life four days after having died, uh, Martha understood what resurrection was all about. The other disciples, including John, uh, the beloved disciple, uh, would understand and believe in the resurrection when they saw the empty tomb. Mary but Magdalene would believe in the resurrection after she encountered uh, Jesus in the garden. Uh, the other disciples, but most importantly, Thomas would believe after they saw Jesus. And Thomas said, I, I need to put my hands in his nail-scarred hands. I need to put my hand in, in his side. But this morning, we believe in the resurrection, even though we have not seen it physically with our own eyes. Indeed, Jesus would share with Thomas in John chapter 20, Verse 29, and he said to Thomas, have, have you believed because you have seen me? And then Jesus uses this word blessed. And if you've been around uh, First Baptist here in Carlsbad, I, I've shared this uh, several times. And, and perhaps no other time like today on, on Easter Sunday morning, when Jesus says that we're blessed, well, we are blessed. In, in the Greek, it's makarios. And so when we read here, blessed is blessed, makarios. Woo! And I know I caught some of you by surprise, so we'll do that one more time so you get a little better. If you're sitting down in your chair, if you're sitting down at the table, if you're sitting on your couch, and Jesus says what? Blessed Macarios, woo, are those who believe but yet have not seen. Now, who is that? That's us. 2,000 years later, after the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we are still being blessed because of our faith, because we believe that Jesus is who he says he is. Bless him, Carlos. Woo! He is risen. He is risen indeed. Jesus is true to his promises. Folks, this morning, the question this side of the resurrection, the question 2,000 years from Jesus rising from the dead, it's that very same question that Jesus asked Martha. It's that same question that Jesus would pose to Thomas. Have you believed? Have you believed that Jesus is who he says he is? He's done what he said he would do. Have you believed, as we sang just a few moments ago, that Jesus is the Messiah? He is the name above all names. He is the blessed Redeemer. He is Emmanuel. He is Lord of all. Have you believed that Jesus is risen from the grave? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting, eternal life. The question on this Easter Sunday, in the midst of all that we're going through, is simply this. The good news is eternal life for those who believe, who place their faith and their trust in the risen Savior and Lord, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. That Jesus was dead 
and was buried. But he is alive. He is risen. He is risen indeed. That is the most important news that we could ever share. That is the most important news that we could ever hear. That is the most important news that we could ever respond to in this life if we're to have life eternal. As a church, even as we're scattered today, and even as we're scattered perhaps throughout the rest of April, Wherever our feet might take us, even if it's by telephone or text or online or through social media, uh, through uh, online worship, wherever our feet might take us, wherever our voice might carry, might we share the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ with our family, friends, co-workers, and neighbors, that they might hear the good news. And what is that good news? Romans chapter 10, verses 14 and 15 and verse 17. How will they call on him, Jesus, and whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching, without someone sharing? And how are they to preach? How are they to share unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach, who announce, who share the good news. So faith comes from hearing and hearing by the word of Christ. Keep on sharing the good news because there are folks all around, whether it's right here in Carlsbad or around the world that are listening and watching at this Easter Sunday morning broadcast, there are folks who need to hear the good news that Jesus Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. And when you hear the good news, if you've never responded to that good news, today is the day. Not tomorrow, not next week, not when we are able to meet again in worship on site, but right now, right where you are, is the time to respond to what you have heard about the good news of Jesus Christ. Because Romans chapter 10, verses 9 through 13 tells us that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, here's the promise, you will be. Say, for with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. For Scripture says, the Word of God says, everyone who believes in Him will not be put to shame. But there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, for the same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing His riches on all who call on Him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. That is the precious promise. Jesus is alive. He is risen. He is risen indeed. And because he is alive, he is true. And his word is true. And his promises, including salvation and eternal life, are true. Today, if you've never heard or if you've never responded, today is the day. Have you believed that might this day be the day? that you can say, yes, I have believed that Jesus is the one and only Son of God. He is who He says He is. He's done what He said He would do. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Father, we thank You this morning uh, that we can come into uh, Your presence to worship You in spirit and in truth. Now, whether we're gathered in a, a church facility, whether we're watching online at our home and to know that uh, you are calling us to worship in spirit and in truth. Father, I pray this morning that for anyone who has never heard the message or has never responded to the message in which they have heard that Jesus is Messiah, He is Redeemer, He is Savior, He is Lord of all. Father, I pray today that your spirit would open hearts and minds to uh, draw them to the cross and to the empty tomb, and that they might believe that Jesus is the one and only Savior of the world. Father, I pray this morning that you would help those of us who are followers of Christ continue to share, continue to announce, continue to proclaim the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ, not just on Easter Sunday, but each and every day that Jesus was dead and buried, but he is alive, he is risen, he is risen indeed. As we give you the praise, the honor, and the glory.
For all this we ask in the wonderful, matchless name of our risen Savior, King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, coming again in power and glory. The name that is above every other name, the name of Jesus. And all God's people everywhere said, Amen. God bless you. Pastor Kevin, praise to you. You come and lead us as we close.